It is 5.05 a.m. It is 74 degrees, and I swear it's gotta be about 80% humidity right now in Nashville, Tennessee. We're about to hit the road, and holy cow, we got ourselves about a 10 and a half hour drive to Mudbug 2021. We've got the 2021 Sea-Doo RXPX 300. It's all geared up, it's ready to go. For a lot of you guys who notice, I do have the cover on. So what am I doing with the cover on? I'm doing a little bit of an experiment. We've actually tucked a couple towels inside and on some of the softer plastics to protect the ski, we wanna see if we get a little bit of flapping, a little bit of scuffing, and worst case scenario, we gotta detail it when we get to Morgan City, Louisiana. But um, otherwise, we're gonna head out, we're gonna hopefully beat the traffic, and we'll get there with plenty of time. We've got a four day weekend ahead of us. This is gonna be great, I'm really excited. So hang tight, this will be a lot of fun. Guys, we're going to Mudbug. Unable to bring the whole family on this year's pilgrimage to the mud bug, I brought my seven-year-old Natalie. First, we came with the Watercraft Journal's freshly broken in 2021 Sea-Doo RXPX 300, and it came equipped with Riva's Pro Series Fonsons, an oil catch can, and speed control override module. Second, I had reached out to seasoned long hauler and friend to the magazine, Billy Duplessis, to help plan some rather extensive rides for the weekend. Well, if you can't already tell, the uh, cover is off of the Sea-Doo. We only made it about an hour out of town before it started to whip itself into pieces. Uh, unfortunately, the plastic tabs got, one of the tabs got torn off, started to whip its way pretty loose. So unfortunately, that Sea-Doo, uh, that official Sea-Doo cover was definitely not made drive at 70 miles an hour down the highway. So we're gonna drive the rest of the way. We got another eight hours to go. And uh, we'll just do a really good detail on the sea dew when we get to Morgan City. With the cover removed and stowed away, we reached Louisiana and crossed over the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge into New Orleans. Passing just outside of the Big Easy took some patience, as traffic tends to trot at a less than hurried pace. But then, of course, we were a little antsy to get out of the truck by this time. Morgan City lay just an hour ahead, and we were anxious to begin our extended mud bug weekend. The next morning began at Dorian's Landing, the local Chevron filling station. Arriving at 9 a.m., the pumps were already lined with skis on trailers ready to ride. With our RXPX topped off and the day's parking pass on the truck's dashboard, we drove over the berm to the levee and launched our sea dew. It didn't take long before another 31 watercraft joined our idling throng. in a bright neon yellow hat, pretty Ricky Johnson led our caravan with Billy aboard his red Yamaha FZR taking up the rear. With two Mississippians in command, I knew Natalie and I were in good hands. Prior to commencing, Billy warned, we're looking at a long one today. Are you up for a full day's riding? I glanced at Natalie who nodded affirmative, but I wasn't too sure that she'd feel the same in a few hours. Ricky led the pack up the causeway into Little Bayou Sorel into Big Fork Bayou. We dipped into Flat Lake before cutting back northward into Dog Island Pass and Duck Lake. We meandered towards Cypress Island, taking the lower Actifalaya River into Yellow Bayou before cutting upwards and returning into the main Actifalaya River, its heavy current pulling us southward. 
Before pouring into Flat Lake, we peeled left and beached on the sandbar to rest and socialize for a bit. Natalie took right to swimming as I mingled with the group. Others poured over each other's modifications, a few new models, and shared tales of other grander adventures. From the sandbar, we journeyed below Dorian's, with a few choosing to tap out early, towards downtown Morgan City and around Bateman Island and beyond Amelia. Skirting Actifalaya Bay, we ventured east through Lake Decade toward Falgut Canal Marina for fuel and food. Just a few miles south of Huma, I worried that my passenger had had enough, but after a cheeseburger and a cold drink, she was all smiles. It was a good thing too, because Billy warned that we were only halfway done for the day. Following a circuitous route back northeast, occasionally intersecting with the Intracoastal Waterway, our group meandered toward Amelia, circumventing Lake Pelord. Passing the old stomping grounds where radar runs and drag races were once held was a bit nostalgic but our group's pace had increased and those remaining were beginning to wane. Ricky and Billy opted to pull the group, who wanted to check out and who wanted to keep going. Several peeled off, returning to the east side launch of Dorian's, while I and Natalie aboard our trusty RXPX soldiered on. We ventured north up the Avoca Island cutoff toward everyone's favorite waterfront watering hole, Spunky Monkey Daiquiri's. Opting for a Gatorade instead, we refueled the sea dew for what seemed like the third time that day and relaxed in the shade. The afternoon was getting a bit late, but Ricky showed no signs of slowing down. Billy leaned in close and teased Natalie, Hey, you want to go swimming? We're going to a great place. And that was all it took for my seven-year-old to catch her third wind. Loading up again, we veered up and around Lake Verret, skimming the coastline for a break in the trees. Suddenly, Ricky hooked east and pulled into an open grove. The lake's floor suddenly rose, and we were on a shallow sandbar tucked into a shady grove of cypress. We swam, played, chatted, and joked for nearly an hour as the sun sank low into the western horizon. The sun don't go down until after 8, Billy mused. That still gives us plenty of time. It was already after 7, and after taking a few shots with the drone, we packed up again and idled into deeper water. The skyline began to fade orange and our shadows stretched far ahead of us as we streaked across the glassy smooth lake. Natalie was spent and so was I, and from what I could see behind us, so was the rest of the group. I chased Ricky as he veered south, coming to a stop in the shade beneath Parish Road 906. Hey man, Ricky laughed, don't follow me, I'm trying to hit 200, go ahead and head back to the launch. And off he went. True enough, Ricky, Billy, and his wife Gina, and a couple others continued riding until their GPS is registered over 210 miles. As Natalie and I sped back to Dorian's, we had totaled 186 miles for the day. An absolute incredible feat, particularly for a seven-year-old girl. Saturday and Sunday's rides began eerily similar. Both days we set in at the industrialized waterfront launch at Dorian's, followed by Pretty Ricky aboard his Yamaha FXHO and bright yellow cap, and racked up absolutely bonkers mileage, albeit nowhere near Friday's nine hour ride. Saturday had us return to the sandbar on the Actifalaya River and shooting plenty of tight, winding routes through the bayous. The added aggressive cornering of the Riva Pro Series Sponson saved our bacon more than once even narrowly avoiding a downed tree. Admittedly, I'm gonna have to publicly eat a little crow when it comes to the 2021 Sea-Doo RX PX300. In reviewing previous iterations of the Musclecraft, I found it sporty and energetic, but just not a good candidate for all-around touring and casual riding. The prior T3 hull simply was too aggressive for wide sweeping turns or traversing wind-blown lake chalk. With the 2021 redesign, the modern RXPX and its slightly resculpted hull resolved both of these behaviors. Equally, its improved ErgoLock R saddle, vertical posture, and increased footwells are far more forgiving than before. Lastly, its 40 plus gallons of storage, including a very generous glove box, makes this vehicle surprisingly accommodating. My only caveat 
is that you gotta add the 1.6 gallon foam molded lid organizer storage bag and Sea-Doo spring loaded reboarding ladder. Seriously, these need to be standard equipment. They're just the best. As a bit of a surprise, both Greg and Jerry Gaddis joined the fray on Saturday, which was an added treat. Greg piloted the Greenhold Garage's 2021 Yamaha GP1800R SVHO while Jerry rode his stock RXPX300. Our path took us under a few low bridges, past some rustic waterfront homes, as well as a pit stop at everyone's favorite open air gas pump, shrimp broil, and live music venue, Grows Marina. If it's not authentic Zydeco music, it's classic rock blasting over the water, and Grows has plenty of both. On Sunday's abbreviated ride, as most folks needed to head home to be at work on Monday, we charged the lesser traveled grid of canals cut into the swamps by the oil refineries. These trails are often perfectly geometrical, ending in 90 degree turns and long straightaways running for miles on end. Ricky discovered an overgrown service canal, which made for some fun serpentine action through the branches and trees. All great exercise for the sea dew. Circling back south through Flat Lake, we took the final hairpin at full speed back to Durine's Landing. Concluding three days worth of incredible riding was a bit bittersweet, as we knew we probably would never repeat such a feat like this again. In all, we amassed an incredible 14 hours of total engine operation time on the sea dashboard, all without a single hiccup or issue. Certainly, anyone with a GPS, a solid sense of direction, and plenty of fuel could handily explore the routes we took this weekend at any time of the year. But nothing is quite like the camaraderie and memories that are made in a little homespun get-together in Morgan City that goes by the name of the Mudbug. The fun, friendship, and unmolested nature is unlike anywhere else. Simply put, there are no other places on this planet that's like the Mississippi Delta region. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any future content. We publish videos six times a week, Sunday through Friday. And if you want even more awesome jet ski content, please visit us at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are published every day Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. All right, last ride of the mud bug. How do you feel? Better? Good? Awesome. Did you have fun? Awesome. You want to do it again? Never? You don't want to come back next year? No, I'm going to come back next year. Like soon? Okay, but maybe next year. Okay. All right, well, that's good, that's good enough for me.